Countdown for blast off. X minus five, four, three, two, X minus one, fire. the far horizons of the unknown come transcribed tales of new dimensions in time and space. These are stories of the future. Adventures in which you'll live in a million could be years on a thousand maybe worlds. The National Broadcasting Company in cooperation with Galaxy Science Fiction Magazine presents X minus one Tonight's story, Mr. Costello, Hero, by Theodore Sturgeon. It began the day the skipper called me into his cabin. I'd been a purser aboard the spaceship Star Climber for almost 12 years, and I'd never yet been asked to Iron Man's cabin. But then a lot of strange things had been happening on this trip to Borenguen. Come in. Oh. Sit down, Purser. I said sit down. Yes, sir. All right. Here's a deck of cards. Deal. Sir? I said deal. Five card draw. Go on, man. Yes, sir. Well? Uh, three of a kind, sir. You didn't draw. I beg your pardon? When you play draw poker, you're supposed to draw. If you don't draw, you're supposed to give your opponent a chance to draw. Now, mister, did you ask me to draw? Well, I, uh... We haven't been playing that way recently. Who changed the rules? I don't know. Uh-huh. Let me ask you something else. You stood a watch last night in the ship's galley. Why, uh... Yes, sir. Has anybody ordered a galley watch? Well... No, sir, but it isn't against the rules, is it? Against the rules? No, it isn't. Now, tell me. Does the cook mind having a man watching him 24 hours a day? Well, no, sir. You see, that way he knows everybody can trust him. You mean that way you know he won't poison you? Well, yes, sir. Now, tell me, person. Who aboard this ship suggested that the cook might try to poison you? Well, I really couldn't say, sir. It, it just came up. Well, Cookie doesn't mind, sir. Really, he doesn't. He, he says if he's watched all the time, then nobody can suspect him. So he doesn't mind. All right, all right. Now, let's proceed to something else. How long has it been customary for the deck officer to bring a witness with him when he takes over the watch? That's out of my department, now, sir. Now, think hard, person. Did you ever hear of a deck officer bringing a witness with him before this trip? No, sir. Or stand a galley watch? No, sir. Or play draw poker without drawing? No, sir. Now... One more thing. Yes, sir. We never had Mr. Costello as a passenger on this ship before, did we? Mr. Costello? Mr. Costello. No, sir, we didn't. Okay. Ask him to come to my cabin. But that's sir... an order, mister. Yes, sir. Let me tell you about Mr. Costello. He was our only passenger. Hello, Mr. Costello. Hello, Purser. Oh, am I interrupting something? Not at all. Come sit down. I'm landing on Borenguen tomorrow, so I won't have much more chance to talk. Well, I'll finish this later, Mr. Costello. Nonsense. Honest men should be open with each other. Go ahead. Show him what you discovered. Well, the Purser's a fine man. Well, Mr. Costello asked me to show him in the space code what a captain can and cannot do. Now, just a minute, sir. You wanted to show me, didn't you? Well, yes. So actually you're going over the limitations of a space captain's power of your own free will, right? Well, I guess so, sure. Sure. Tell the person the part that you just read me. Well, it's a sort of safeguard against letting the skipper's power go to his head. Like uh, 
Suppose a time comes when the captain begins to act up, you see. The crew figures a lunatic has taken over the bridge. Well, the crew can send a delegate for an accounting. If the skipper refuses, then the crew can confine the skipper. Well, isn't there something about the proceedings having to be radioed at the time they happen? Now, there is a man who is absolutely fair. Witnesses for the watch, safeguards on the kitchen. I tell you, you're, you're all good men here. Yes, sir, this is the safest ship I've ever seen. Gives a fellow a nice feeling to know he isn't going to get his orders wrong or accidentally <laughs> find something in the food. Yes, and I wonder why we never thought of that before. Oh, uh, I nearly forgot. Mr. Costello, the skipper, wants to see you in his cabin. Oh? Uh-huh. Right away. I see. Uh, will you come along with me just as a friendly precaution? Hmm? You, you can wait outside. Well... Well, in that way, both of us will know what happened. I'll uh, never be able to say that you didn't give me the message, and you'll be able to say uh, I uh, went to see the skipper. Right? Well, I guess so. You know, that this buddy system sort of makes everything safer, doesn't it? That's right, Purser. You can't do anything bad if you have a friend along to witness. Mr. Costello and I went to the captain's cabin, and I waited outside. After a while, I could hear them shouting. That is, I could hear the captain shouting. Mr. Costello never raised his voice. And let me tell you, Mr. Costello, that if my crew questions my sanity, they have legal recourse. But you can be sure that meanwhile, if a single man aboard questions my authority, he will learn that I am master of the ship, even if he must learn it at the point of a gun. Now, sir, get out. You okay, Mr. Costello? Oh, yes, yes, I'm fine. Did you uh, hear anything? Well, yes, I did. Would you remember what you heard? I think so. Let's see. You see this uh, little gadget, no bigger than a pocket watch? Well, yes, sir, what is it? Listen, I'll open it. If a single man aboard questions my authority, he will learn that I am master of this ship, even if he must learn it at the point of a gun. Whose voice is that? Why, it's the captain. Good man. But how... That's simple. You see, this little pin that I wear on my lapel here? This is a microphone. This watch is a magnetic recorder. I just use it as a toy. For... Well, I'll be done. You see, Purser, I'm a collector. What do I collect? Voices. Voices anywhere, anybody, anytime. Listen. A lunatic has taken over the bridge. Why, that's the third officer. Mm-hmm. Listen to this now. I better not, Mr. Costello. I wouldn't want you thinking I take bribes from passengers. Recognize it? Why, that's my voice. Exactly. The time you brought me the special radio message from Earth Central. And you offered me a blue gemstone, and I said that... Hey, listen to this. I take bribes from passengers. Well, if that isn't the end... <laughs> Cute, huh? Well, I guess I'll get back to my cabin and pack... Uh, when do we uh, arrive at uh, Boringwood? Six, tomorrow morning. Oh, good. By the way, I'd like you to come see me when you uh, put in there again. Well, that's very nice, sir, but you're an important man, and I'm just... Nonsense. First... I insist that you visit me. Well, that's real nice. Oh, by the way, what's the major trade on Boringwood? Blunker. Blunker? Yes, it's a kind of soft fur. You can make a warm coat out of it that will roll up into a thimble. You don't say. And the Glunker trade, uh, that's carried out by, uh, by trappers? Mostly. Mm-hmm. They work alone and bring in the pelts. I see. They spend a lot of time alone, hmm? That's right. You know, sometimes I envy them. I mean, working on a ship, you're almost never alone, and the way I see it, a man needs to be alone sometimes. Correction. Only, I repeat, only if he has something to hide. Otherwise, to be alone is antisocial. And evil... We put in at Boringwin the following morning. I stood at the ramp of the ship and checked out the supplies and checked in the glunker pelts that we were taking back to Earth. The Boringwin people were a nice, independent, easygoing bunch. I knew a Boringwin woman named Nola, and she came out to the ship to see me. 15,000 glunker pelts. Check. 300 pounds of radioactive ergite. Check. Oh, uh, just put that shipment of show seed over next to the ramp. Hello. What? Well, Nola. Nola. I saw your ship on the cargo manifest. Well, it's good to see you. Will you be on board when long? Just for, just for a day or so. Listen, I, I have to get this cargo checked in. Can we see each other later? I'll be through at the spaceport at 16 hours. Well, good. Suppose I... 
Oh, excuse me a minute. Here comes our passenger. Well, good morning. I see we have arrived safely. Yes, sir. I expected you out before this. I had a few items to get in order. Oh, Mr. Costello, this is Nola. She's a uh, born Gwenna. Well, it's very nice to meet you. This is a real nice guy, Nola. See that he doesn't have any trouble with customs, will you? Nola works here. Any friend of the person? Wonderful. Well, I'll say goodbye now. Remember to look me up, person, next time you hit Borenguin. I will. He gave me that big, warm handshake of his and clapped his arm on my shoulder. It gave you a good feeling to know that a big shot like Mr. Costello really liked you. I got the rest of the cargo checked in. Took maybe three hours. Then I was about to go in and ask the skipper for leave when a couple of guys with Space Bureau credentials came aboard. All right, that's it, boys. Close the hatches. Excuse me. Yes? Space Bureau. Is Captain Irison aboard? Why, yes. You're the purser, huh? That's right. Something wrong? Would you mind answering a couple of questions? Not at all. Has the captain been behaving strangely this trip? Well, not strangely, exactly. Anything unusual? Well, no, he, uh... He called me in for a card game. Mm-hmm. Does that happen often? No, never happened before. Was he upset? Yes, I guess he was. Okay. This gentleman would like you to answer a few simple questions. Meanwhile, I'll look up the skipper. They took the skipper off the ship and left Borenguin the next morning with a new skipper assigned by the port captain. There was a rumor later that old Iron Man had been court-martialed or something. Nobody knew for certain. We made the rounds after that. Sigma, Nightingale, Carano, all the planets in the fourth system. We even went back to Earth with a load of glizzard skins and black prints. It must have been about, oh, 16 months later that we made for Borenguin again. I was talking to the third officer. Purser. Hmm? I, uh, I'd like to talk to you. Go ahead. We land at Borenguin tomorrow. So? I don't like it. What's wrong with Borenguin? It's one of the best ports in the system. It was. What do you mean? We got a radiogram from the Borenguin Customs a little while ago. Okay, we got a radiogram. Oh, said... some bureaucrat sent it. Nothing will happen. Another thing. The way it was signed. How was it signed? Loneliness is evil. Port Captain Borenguin. Loneliness is evil? That's what it said. On a government radiogram? Mm-hmm. Loneliness is evil. Where did I hear that before? When we touched down on Boring Gwen at 1,200 hours, what a change. The spaceport was deserted. The only people who came aboard were two agents from customs. They censored our tapes and checked our written literature. I finally started a conversation with them. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, sir? Yeah? There is a uh, born Gwena named Nola that used to work in customs. I wonder if she's still there. I wouldn't know. Well, the reason I asked, she usually meets my ship when it comes in. Yeah, I see. Well, uh, maybe I'll look her up. She has an apartment on R Street. She won't be living there. Try Central Barracks. Central Barracks? That big warehouse near the spaceport. I thought they stored the glunker furs there. They don't use the warehouses to store things anymore. No? They need them for the people. The people? You haven't been on Boren, Gwen, since the Brotherhood movement? I haven't been here for 16 months. Well, you'll find that the people have moved into the warehouses now. Well, what about the apartments? What about the homes? They're used only for storage space. I don't get it. Look, we haven't got time to explain now. My partner and I have to get back to central control. Well, maybe I'll go to try and find Nola. Better take a companion. What for? They don't like soloists on Born Gwen. Since when? Since Brotherhood. No ladder has a single rung, you know. So what? It takes a hundred pair of hands to build a house. Okay. A single pair is useless. Not only useless, but evil. I don't get your drift. All humanity is made up of many parts. Any part that wants to go off by itself hurts the main thing. What good would your hand be if a single finger suddenly decided to go off by itself? Listen, is this a gag? It's deadly serious. 
Well, suppose I want to go off by myself. We'll help you. And suppose I don't want to be helped. Then you're a trapper, a glunker. You'll be sent into the bush country where the other soloists are sent. Holy smokes, this place has gone mad. Are you coming with us? Look, suppose, just suppose that I want to walk across the field to the warehouse by myself, all alone. You can try. But you won't get two steps before they pick you up. Take our advice. Get a companion. I let them take me over to the barracks. The place that used to be a warehouse. It was unbelievable. The place had been completely cleared of every wall, every partition. There, in front of my eyes, were 10,000 beds, cots, and mattresses spread out over the entire floor of the warehouse. The light was blinding. Huge floods and spots bathed every square inch. Nothing was concealed. Even the plumbing, showers, tubs, sinks were lined up against an open wall. The agents came in with me and stood at the door. A cluster of Borangwin people waited in a roped-off area. This is it. Wow. The customs personnel are in that third aisle going north. I'll walk down there. Thank, thanks for the company. It's a duty. Wait. I'll get you a companion. Anyone for the third aisle going north? Third aisle going north. Yeah. There comes a man. He'll accompany you. A small, frightened-looking man detached himself from the waiting group and went with me up the aisle of the warehouse. The sound, the smells were frightening. Thousands of people milling around. No privacy. Everyone terrified of being alone. I wondered how this had happened. Finally, after an hour of searching, I found my friend Nola. Well, that's the way it is on Borangwen now. Nobody seems to know just how it happened just seemed better to be with somebody all the time. Then nobody could accuse you of doing anything wrong. But somebody must have started these accusations. Somebody must have put the fear into people. I don't know. It started with the glunkers. The fur trappers? That's right. We began to hear things about them. That they were thieves, that they planned to take over the city. Just rumors, of course. And pretty soon, if you didn't like somebody, you called him a glunker. Then there were signs... No glunkers allowed. You know? Oh, I saw some. We began to hear about it on the televisor, and pretty soon they appointed a committee to investigate and find out if there was any truth to the rumors about the glunkers. It was headed by Mr. Costello. Costello? Mr. Costello? He's a big shot now. Owns half the city, I guess. Well, it can't be the same one. Yes, it is. I've seen him. When did everybody move to the central warehouse? When the police started picking up soloists, everybody began to move in together. Didn't take long. That's the strange thing. How little time it took. I talked to Nola for a while, then I couldn't take it any longer. I had to get out to get away by myself. I found somebody who was going toward the exit, and after a while, we were standing outside the warehouse entrance. I'm going south. Uh, I'm going north to the spaceport. Oh. Tell me, does anybody travel alone? Sometimes we take a chance on it. I guess I'll have to take a chance right now. I'll be late for my job if somebody doesn't come along soon. Where do you work? That orange building right across the street. Would you like me to walk with you? Oh, you'll just get stranded there. I'll make a run for it. The street looks clear. Well, thanks for the company. Not at all. So long. Hey, mister, look out that car. Look out! Ah! Why, you... Is he dead? Yes, sir. That was deliberate. I saw you... Hello, Purser. What's Mr. Costello? Yes, I'm sorry about the accident. My chauffeur was... He, He tried to run away. That's what happens to soloists. If he'd had a companion to warn him to thrust him out of the way. You understand that, don't you, Percy? I don't know. Climb into the car. You can't go wandering about Borangwen alone. Well, I... Police will take care of the body. It's all right. 
Okay, if you say so, Mr. Carson. Drive to the spaceport. Yes, sir. Well, what do you think of our little planet? Well... I knew you'd like it. Just think of it, Purser. All humankind, a single unit. Yes, this is a people that has found the truth. It awes me. Makes me humble. I, uh... Well, speak up, man. I'm your friend. Well, I was going to say, I'm not sure I like it. Well, take your time. Nobody has to make a man see the truth. <laughs> isn't that right? Well... That's right, isn't it? Yes, I, I, I guess. I guess it is. Fine. Yes, only the trappers refuse to see the truth. Are they really dangerous? Dangerous? They go out and spend weeks alone by themselves, don't they? Alone with their own evil thoughts. Evil thoughts? We all have them, you know. Even you. For example, you, you remember this? Well, I... Uh... Well, this should refresh your mind. Listen to this. I take bribes from passengers. Your voice, Purser, and a very evil thought, too. But that isn't what I said. That's what's on the tape, Purser. Now then, I... I wouldn't use it against you, of course. Mr. Costello, what is it you want from me? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Well, a uh, minor favor, perhaps. Go on. Your ship is going back to Earth after it leaves uh, Borengren. Yes. You will have a passenger. I didn't know that. To be exact, a mentally deranged man. Who is he? His name is Hines. He's been the Earth Consul here on Borengren. He's been recalled to Earth to report. You said he was mentally ill? He is, but the Earth government doesn't know him. Well, what can I possibly do? I wouldn't want Mr. Hines to go back and tell them a lot of lies about what's happened on Borengren. Well, Purser, I want you to put this capsule into Mr. Hines's food. What is it? No, oh, sleeping potion. You think I'm a murderer, Mr. Costello? Uh, sir, do you know what will happen if this tape recording of your voice is sent back to Earth? Do you know what they do to persons who take bribes? You'll be court-martialed. You'd use it? Only in the interests of protecting our happy society. Now then, will you see that Mr. Hines is properly sedated? I... You can get ten years of Uranus. Well, Purser? I... Give me the capsule. Good. Right over to the ship, driver. The first day out, the Earth Council, Mr. Hines, was in his cabin, and I brought him his dinner. He was a tense, nervous little man. Is your dinner, sir? Put it down, steward. Oh, I'm the purser, sir. The steward's ill, and I'm helping out. I see. Do you know what's happened on Boren Gwen? I was only there a few hours, Mr. Hines. Let me tell you, then. You won't believe it. Nobody will believe it. First, it was a little wedge, driven in the one place it might exist between the Sithi people and the trappers, the gunkers. Suddenly, the gunkers were a menace. Then came the changes. You didn't have to prove that a gunker had done anything. You just had to prove he was a gunker. It all happened so fast. Pretty soon you were afraid to be alone for a second. There was a man named Costello. He came from Earth. I know him. You know him? He went to Borengwin on this ship. Then you must be the one. The one? Which one? Who testified against your captain for the court-martial. What? There was a tape recording, your voice and the voice of the third officer. Costello had them. He used them to send the skipper to Uranus? I didn't know. You must have known. What's happened to us? What's happened? What? I got him into his bunk and gave him a sedative. Then I took away the food I'd fixed for him. I still had Costello's poison capsule in my pocket. I went down to the radio room and sent a message to Earth headquarters. Two days later, we landed. Mr. Hines told his story, and I told mine. I showed them the poison capsule and told them what had happened to the skipper and about the tape recorder. Within 24 hours, a task force of the Earth fleet was on its way to Borengwen. 
It wasn't much of a battle, they tell me. The Borangwen army didn't have its heart in it. That was, uh, oh, 20 years ago, I guess. About Mr. Costello? I met him again last week, right here on Earth. Funny thing, I was sitting in Central Park on a bench. Well, 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 if it isn't the purser. I'm sorry, I don't believe... Look, look, look closer. Don't you recognize me? No, I... Why, Mr. Costello, I thought you... You thought I was on Uranus? I was. I served 20 years. Mind if I sit down? It's a free earth. You know, I'm glad I ran into you. I think you may be just the man that I need. Need? Yes. Let me show you something. Here, in this pouch. Recognize these? They're just live ants. Exactly. Let me dump them out on the ground. Won't they crawl away? They'll come back. Watch. You see, I put a little piece of this bread in the pouch, and I, and I lay it on the ground. See how they crawl back? Yes, all except that one. He's interested in that dead caterpillar. Yes. You see, about one in 30, I discovered, will eat something different. Break away from the pack. So what? Don't you see, man? If we can find a way to make the others turn on that one in 30. If we can make the bread eaters think that the caterpillar eaters are dangerous. They're not dangerous. They're just different. What's the difference? Just so we can get the bread eaters scared enough. They'll turn on the others. And then? And then we can make them do anything that we want. You see? You see what I'm driving at? If you think of these ants as people... Well, where are you going? I'm leaving, Mr. Costello. Why? Doesn't what I say make sense? Yes, it does, Mr. Costello, except for one thing. What is that? I'm no ant. So long, Mr. Costello. You have just heard X-1, presented by the National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with Galaxy Science Fiction Magazine, which this month features The Claustrophile, an unusual story by Theodore Sturgeon, which turns common sense completely around and plumps it down squarely on its feet. Galaxy Magazine, on your newsstand today. Tonight, by transcription, X-1 has brought you Mr. Costello, Hero. A story from the pages of Galaxy written by Theodore Sturgeon and adapted for radio by George Leffert. Featured in the cast were Wendell Holmes, Mandel Kramer, Bob Hastings, Joe DeSantis, Terry Keene, James Stevens, James Dukas, and Raymond Edward Johnson. Your announcer, Fred Collins. X-1 was directed by Daniel Sutter and is an NBC Radio Network production. <laughs>